Hi guys! This is Claire, and today we are going to quickly go over some basic concepts and vocabulary that's essential for talking about art, especially critiquing. I know going over vocab might sound boring, but it really is important to know these terms so that everyone is on the same page when discussing art and media. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to Inked Gaming. They're our awesome sponsor, and they have a huge selection of TCG, PC, and tabletop gaming merchandise designed by independent artists such as myself. If you can't find something you like, you can also upload your own design to make a completely custom mouse pad, playmat, or tapestry. Please take a look with the link below, and don't forget to use the code SUBJECTIVELY10 for 10% off your entire order at checkout. Alright, let's dive in. I want to get started by repeating something we've talked about several times here at Subjectively, the importance of critique. As a visual artist, critique is hands down the single most helpful thing you can get for improving your skills. Getting an outside perspective on art you've been staring at for hours and hours can be really illuminating, especially because it's really easy to get tunnel vision when you sink a lot of time into a piece of art. However, an outside perspective is really only helpful if you share a specific visual vocabulary. For instance, a comment like, this looks weird, is not helpful. It isn't specific and tells the artist nothing about how they might change a piece to fix what's wrong. A better critique would be, there isn't enough contrast. It's a little more specific and gives the artist a starting point for the next draft. A fantastic critique would be, the hue and value of the lights and shadow are too similar, creating a lack of contrast that makes the palette look washed out. This critique uses very specific terminology that lets the artist know exactly which aspects of their art needs fine tuning. If we color pick samples from areas of light and areas of shadow, we can see that the hue, the chroma or pigment of a color, independent of its saturation or value, of the green and blue here are very similar. Additionally, if we convert the sphere to grayscale, we can see that the values, the lightness or darkness of colors or tones, are almost identical. If we use Photoshop's contrast tool to automatically boost contrast, we see immediately that it increases the degree of difference between the lights and shadows. The hues are still pretty similar though. Look what happens when we repaint the sphere with a more complementary color palette and give it warmer shadows to contrast the cool light source. All right, that's much better. Let's check out a side-by-side. -side. It's a pretty big difference, right? Thanks to the specificity of the final critique, it was easy to identify exactly what needed to change to fix the sphere. Talking about art is complicated. Whether or not someone likes a piece of art often comes down to personal taste, making part of any conversation about art necessarily subjective. However, objective qualities like those already addressed in this demonstration will always be an important part of that conversation. So without further ado, here's an abridged list of some important terminology to know and understand when talking about art. Saturation. The intensity of the chroma independent of its value. Form. The shapes that make up the subject of an artwork. Texture the tactile quality of different described surfaces. For example, is it wet or dry? Even or uneven? Hard or soft? Temperature, the warmth or coolness of a color. Contrast, the degree of visual difference. Contrast can come from different hues, values, saturations, texture, temperature, or a combination of many things. Mark making, 
the visual evidence of the application of color or line. Literally just a term we use to talk about made marks. Composition. The organization of shapes and colors. For example, in this simple composition, there are only four shapes and it relies on a simple hierarchy of contrasting scale and value to draw attention to the subject. There are a lot of ways to utilize and combine these visual elements to create artwork that's visually pleasing. Like we always say, there's no right or wrong way to make art. In general, we try to use areas of high contrast to draw attention to the most important areas of a composition, but it all really depends on the intention behind each piece. For instance, in concept art, it's important to use these visual elements to maximize the clarity of the artwork so that the artist can accurately show the rest of the development team exactly what their ideas are. In contrast, for storyboard artists, it's more important to show the action and energy of a sequence than it is to show every little detail so as to convey the rhythm and tone of a scene. One last thing before I leave you guys today. We've more or less covered the technical side of talking about art, but there is one other important aspect of talking about art that I haven't really addressed yet. Guys, please be nice to each other. It's important to be honest if someone asks for help, but it's even more important to frame your comments constructively. I like to present critique in a compliment sandwich, padding a criticism between two nice things. There's no need to trash anyone's feelings over art, we're all just trying to learn and improve. Good critique should be truthful, but encouraging. And that's pretty much it. I hope some of you found this video useful, and let me know in the comment section if you think I left anything out or if you have a question for me. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.